Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to the Airbrush Garage. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I painted Eddie here from the Iron Maiden album cover. It took me about 15 hours to paint Eddie with a variety of techniques. Matter of fact, if any of you guys out there saw any of my you know, beginner technique videos, basically a lot of those techniques, if not all of them, went into using this painting. Everything from paper stencils to freehand stencils, freehand texturing techniques, it's all in this painting. So if that's something you guys are interested in, please stick around. It's not the shortest video in the world. It's about 30 minutes long, but if you stick around to the end, you check out all the techniques that it took to paint this thing. So with that, if you like this type of content, I would really appreciate if you consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you get future notifications. A couple comments, good or bad, really helps out with YouTube algorithm. It helps this channel grow. A thumbs up will be great. Don't forget to check out all my Amazon affiliate links for the products I use in this video and all my other videos down below. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start off by, you know, placing a paper template that I cut out. So I made a few copies. I always make a few copies. So I'm just going to start off by spraying in the background. Now, you see the mixing stick that I'm using. You can use anything, you know, here that you want. But I use mixing sticks a lot of times just to hold the paper template down. And the most important thing here is you want to be making sure that you are spraying as much as you can at a 90 degree angle to the paper template. And you also see that I employed a lot of magnets around. I really do like the use of these magnets. These are very strong magnets. I like them because spraying this on, because I'm spraying this on a gesso hardboard, and you need pretty strong magnets to be able to, to be able to go through the hardboard and to the metal backing board that I have behind it. So this works out really well. Now the important thing to take note here is when you're flooding in a background. You don't want to go too fast, too quick. You want to build it up slowly. I would say, you know, between three to even four coats. So now I'm going to switch over to some black, as you see, and I'm just going to be spraying everything in here just to give myself all the correct proportions before I go in and start detailing. And again, this overspray will get underneath this mask if you're not careful. So you want to hold it down the best that you can. Now at this point, if some overspray does get under the mask, it's not that big of a deal because we have a lot of detailing and a lot of cover up and textures of many layers to go. But I like to keep the cleanup to a minute. All right, so once that's sprayed in, as you can see, all the proportions are there. It's really raw, but now I'm gonna take the aggressive eraser and I'm just gonna start sketching in all of the details. This is gonna be a very, very light layer. It's the first layer of texture, but it's really gonna set me up for all of the other work I'm gonna be doing. The camera's really not even gonna pick up on what I'm sketching at this point. And as you can see, another technique is you take your painting, don't be afraid to turn it in all different directions. This just makes it much easier, much more comfortable, especially if you're right-handed or left-handed, to be able to sketch in all these details. Now, the other thing you're seeing me do here is I'm cutting the end of the eraser. I do this a lot, and it just keeps the end of the eraser nice and square. It helps the eraser cut in, especially when you want to do some fine lines. The other thing you see, I have my reference here, and I have it turned the same way I have my board turned. And I'm paying close attention to my reference here while I'm sketching in the details. All right, so now I have some black loaded up in the gun. And I'm basically going to be painting in between what I just sketched out with the eraser. Because what I was sketching out with the eraser, mostly it was going to be where the highlights are going to go. So I'm basically painting in between those particular lines that I put in. And you can see, I'm going to take out the eraser a lot, and you can correct some things, or a lot of things, while you're airbrushing. And I'm going to build texture this way. I'm going to freehand with the airbrush, and I'm going to come back in with the eraser, and I'm going to add texture, highlights, and basically build up this in a few layers.
just don't be afraid here. If you make a mistake, you can pull out that eraser, especially when the paint is nice and fresh, and you basically can erase it away. And then go back in and you know, touch it up. So I'm just in here detailing and shading. Just have fun with it. Now you can see me coming back in with the eraser. If I get a little too much in an area that I don't want, as you can see, I could just erase it out. So you can see the first layer highlights were down. Then I'm coming back in with the second layer and I'm not gonna go over every highlight. I'm gonna leave some highlights back with the first layer and then have some with the second layer. So it's gonna give you two different tones of highlights. So again, don't be afraid here. If you feel like you went too far, you made a mistake, you could always go back in, put more black in, come back in with your eraser. The other thing that you're not seeing me do is the paint builds up on the end of the eraser pretty quickly. So if I'm not ready to cut the end of the eraser or square it off, I rub it off onto my jeans or my, my pants to you know, clean the eraser off. If your paint is fresh, it comes off pretty easily. Now, if I come back the next day or two, the paint's pretty hard. Wicked paint is very hard to manipulate after it's fully cured, but I still can do it. But it's not as easy as when the paint is fresh. The effect with the eraser is much more crisp and clean when the paint is fresh. So you can see with the freehand, you don't have to be all that precise sometimes. If you're not at that level where you're, you know, you're getting really, really great detail doing freehand, as you can see, you could do some shading, come back in with the pencil, and you could sketch it out as well. So I like to do a combination of both. Now I'm just going to come in with the black, and I'm going to put all of the darkest spots of the face and the hair and stuff like that. Just, you know, start building some definition. You see that spot right there? You can see I got a little too heavy. I really didn't like it, but no problem. It's all right, I take the eraser and I actually use it to my advantage.
So I'm going to take the paper template here and I'm actually going to wind up cutting out the pitchfork that you're going to see in here. And I'm just going to put this pitchfork in just for a placeholder, basically. Now, the other technique you're going to see me doing here is I'm going to go back and forth. You see me flipping it back and forth. It's almost like if you had an old cartoon book, a drawing book, and you have to flip the pages and you see it moving across the screen. Well, if you keep flipping the page like that, you could actually see, we should be able to see if you're lined up or not. And that's how I've just lined that up. So I'm just gonna fog that in with some white. Again, just as a placeholder, I'll come back to that and render that later. Now I'm taking the paper template, as you can see, and I need to define that shoulder a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with just a little bit of black and I'm just gonna brush it in just a little bit, just to get an idea of where that shoulder's at. All right, so now I'm gonna start adding some color. The color basically is gonna be mostly a reflection of the fire that's coming out of Eddie's hand. So I'm gonna start off with some raw sienna here. And then I'll wind up adding two different other shades of yellow, and I'll explain that as we go. So I'm basically looking at my reference paying close attention to where all of this glow from the fire is going. When I do paintings, I like to build them up slow. It takes me a little bit more time, but I just happen to like the result it gives me. I know I could probably do it quicker by just going to, you know, a few certain colors maybe and flooding them on there. That's just not the way I particularly care to work. Again, I know it takes me a little longer, but that is the way that I learn and the way I like to work. Sometimes I work dark to light. Sometimes I work light to dark. I've got a little overspray on the teeth there and I just went back in with the eraser and cleaned it up. Now I'm gonna start defining the hair a little bit. Again, there's a glow of yellow in his hair and there's a couple different tones of yellow in his hair, but again, I'm still on that first tone. So I'm just not gonna get real detailed with the hair. I'm gonna come in with the eraser to define those details. Once you establish all of the line work with the black, going in and coloring is just that. You're gonna go in and color it. A lot of the detail work is already done, but the defining of the hair like this and the detail, yes, you're gonna pull out the eraser and you're gonna go detail it down. There's some people that might wanna just detail the hair you know, freehand. If that's the technique you wanna go for, that's fine as well. I chose the technique of using the eraser and defining the hair. There's really no right or wrong way to do this stuff as long as you achieve the results at the end that you're looking for. All right, so once I get the hair defined and I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with it, I'm going to take a few drops of brown and add it to my raw sienna for my second tone. And I'm not gonna cover up everything that I did the first time with the raw sienna because I want some of that to show through as well.
So I'm really paying attention. I have my reference up above. It's off or out of view of the camera. But you really do want to pay attention to that reference as you go. I'm constantly looking up at it. All right, so now I have blue in the airbrush and it's the same color blue as the background. And I'm going to incorporate that into some of its hair. And again, following my reference. The blue just really offsets the hair with the background and the different shades of yellow from the glow of the fire that you see at the end. The fire, I do the fire last that comes out of Eddie's hand, but it really does add a nice touch. I wouldn't have thought to put blue in the hair, but that's what following the reference does. Sometimes, you know, the, your reference will show you things that you wouldn't have thought to do. That's why it's very important that you follow the reference, you know, as close as you can. I'm not saying you can't take artistic liberties by all means, but you know, sometimes you got to think out of the box and putting the blue in the hair is something that I would have thought to do. So I put a few more drops of brown in the raw sienna and I'm darkening it up a little bit again. Again, be careful not to go over everything. Just put it in you know, certain spots to build a tone. As you can see it on the sleeve, you can see the different values of the yellow. Again, I'm not coming in with that one dark tone now and just spraying it everywhere over the tone. I'm being very careful and, you know, sparingly putting it in spots. You can see the different shades of tone now almost everywhere you look as far as the hands and you know, the hair. And every time I do shading with the hair, again, I'm going for a technique with the hair where I use the eraser to get my texture. So the hair really is not all freehand. It's freehand as far as misting or shading in the values and then coming back in with the eraser to you know, render the hair. All right, now I have some white, just regular, you know, detail white in the airbrush. And I'm gonna put his eyes in. And it's just your dot technique. That's all it is. making two big dots. The cool part about this, if you make a mistake, you could just come back in with the black and you can just erase it out. All right, now I have some detail white just loaded up in the gun and I am just gonna start fogging in the flames. I'm not gonna use any stencils here. I'm just getting the flow of the flames, keep it light, keep it soft. Just get your flow going. I don't like a very stencilized flame. You know, it really depends on the look I'm going for, but for the most part, you know, I'm not that great at flames, but when I do do them, I don't like that very, very stencilized look, so I like to keep them, you know, very soft. You'll see in a second where I do bring a stencil in because I do like to get some definition as well. But again, it really depends on the look I'm going. Now I'm just going to freehand in some electricity. This is going to be the first basically layer of this. I'll come back in and you know, brighten it up a little bit later. There's still a lot of background work to be done. But this is just going to serve as uh, a marker for where I want to put this stuff. You can see I have a mistake there, it happens. It's okay, turn your mistake into something good. Make it work for you. If it doesn't work, you can always erase it out or put some black over it or there's ways to fix your mistakes all the time. Okay, 90% of the time. There are some mistakes that you can't come back from. That wasn't one of them.
as you can tell some things there sometimes it doesn't matter how long you're doing it sometimes the brush just isn't cooperating with you but that's okay don't panic like I said, there's always ways to fix mistakes. Ninety percent of the time. All right, so you'll, as you'll see what I'm going to be doing here next is I'm basically just going to be building up a little bit of texture. It's almost like doing clouds where, you know, the way I do clouds at least, where I come in and you're just, you know, being very sporadic. You can see almost like, you know, the dots being moved very quickly and then being shaded over. And the more layers you put on, the more texture you build. So I really do like that technique. And you'll see that's basically just the first layer of, of you know, building up the texture. Now I got a dark blue in the gun and just following my reference again, this is going to set some contrast right there, especially between Eddie's jeans in the background, because before this, Eddie's jeans were the same color as the background. So as you can see here, I'm just taking a piece of paper and I had some black and another brush over on the side and I just sharpened up. I saw a place on his sleeve where I wanted to sharpen up. Something as simple as a piece of paper uses a straight edge. That's all you need. So now I have black back in the gun. And again, working on that background, following the reference. See, got a little on the hair, not a big deal. Take that eraser out, get rid of it. You're working freehand, it's gonna happen. So now I'm using a freehand stencil here and just sharpening up that shoulder that I laid in before real lightly and his arm. So I'm taking my black here because it's getting close to the end and I just want to start sharpening up some of the darkest areas. Back to the purple. Saw a couple spots where I needed to still lay some in, darken it up a little bit. Got a little purple on his fingernail right there. Just clean it up. Take a nice sharp eraser out and get those highlights back in there. Adding that darker background, adding some contrast, this really makes it start to pop. All right, so this is a stencil I made on a Cricut out of four mil Mylar. It's a two-piece stencil. The first stencil that I'm gonna be putting down here is bigger than the second one. What I mean by that is this is gonna be the white background, as you'll see in a minute. I'm going to spray everything white. This is going to be a lot easier for when I put my second layer on, the red. 
the red's gonna be able to cover a lot easier. Even though I'm gonna be using opaque colors here, I'm gonna be using opaque white and opaque red, the red is still gonna color easier over a white background than it will the blue. You're gonna see here, I'm gonna use a lot of magnets to hold this down. Another way to do this would be to cut this out of vinyl and make the stencil and stick it on. I chose to do the Bilar method right here, and but you're gonna see it's gonna be very hard to hold it down. I put a glove on instead of spraying my fingers. I'm gonna use my fingers and my mixing stick and again, spray it at a 90 as much as possible so you're not spraying underneath and spray at the edges that you're holding down because you really do want something like this to become you know, nice, crisp, and clean. So again, the magnets are just invaluable when you're doing something like this. And again, I'm gonna be fogging this in, so I'm gonna take you know at least two layers, possibly three, but probably two I can build this up in to get this to where I need it. So I skipped forward a little bit. I got all of the white on. My second template is on. If you look real close, you can see that this template, the letters are smaller than the first one. It's gonna create a white border going around each letter. So I have, you know, just regular wicket red in the gun here. And again, I'm gonna build this up, you know, at least with two layers. Don't wanna to go too much too fast. But you can see I'm really taking care to hold everything down because I don't want it to bleed through. So you can see the centers because when you make a stencil like this, you don't have centers. So what I did with the centers is I exacto bladed out the center of the centers and put masking tape over them so I could stick them onto the board. Hopefully that made sense. Doing kind of the same thing right here, but I'm doing it with transfer tape. So what I did is I cut out the number of the beast, as you can see right there. I exacto bladed that out of the paper, so I have a paper template. And when you cut out a letter that has a center, you no longer have the center. So I'm using a transfer tape, which is a really cool technique. Um, if you didn't know it, this is a, a good one to remember. And I'm taking a transfer tape and I'm just cutting the center of the letters out. The other technique I got going on there is I'm taking the pencil and I'm running it over the paper template or over the masking and that shows me the outline of the letter so it makes it easier for me to know where I'm at so I can cut the center. Now I'm just gonna fog this in just to show me where everything's at. The other thing I'm gonna do right now is I got some red oxide in the gun and I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna render or finish rendering the pitchfork. I added a drop or two of red to the red oxide just to brighten it up or make it a little bit more red in certain areas. What you're not seeing here is that pitchfork is attached to a little devil puppet down below. I chose not to put him in this painting, but you'll see the strings that I'm gonna put coming from his fingers in just a minute. So now I got some wicked red in the gun and I'm just gonna go over the letters again. I don't have to be exact here or neat. It's supposed to look like it's just, you know, hand you know painted on with a spray can and dripping down so i'm just going to follow the white along with you know a few drips and drabs All right, so I'm gonna come back over to fire. I got my H template out here, and I'm gonna use this to add a little definition into the fire. I'm starting off with yellow, or wicked yellow, and basically gonna use three colors here. I'm gonna use the wicked yellow, golden yellow, a little bit of red, and then, of course, the white, or some highlights. So now I'm coming in with the golden yellow. We're just gonna build up layers.
Now you can see I'm adding in some red. And again, coming back in with some white between each color. I'm just going to add in some little you know, freehand ambers, some sparks coming off the fire, basically. Now I'm going to come back in and brighten up all of that electricity or whatever's going on down there. Remember the one I put back in before they said just basically a placeholder. A lot of the overspray from doing the background got on it. So we're just gonna you know, go back over it and add a little bit more. So back to the fire. Had a little bit of golden yellow in there because that's really the main focus point, probably the golden yellow that's gonna be giving the fire its glow that reflects on the eddy. So here I'm coming back in and um, looking at the reference, I realized I didn't do this part with the teeth. And I got this little part of the stencil on this big shield to cover up the teeth and just add a little bit of freehand in there for his tongue. Mimic a little saliva. I think we should be good. You make a mistake here all you got to do is come back in with the black and erase it out start over now i'm just finishing up with the black going around the border All right, so one last thing, I'm gonna be putting the strings in. I know the puppet's not on here, but the strings are going down to the puppet below. If you know the album cover, you know there's one down there. So I'm gonna come in here with some opaque white. I'm using transfer tape here. I use a ruler to cut some really thin lines. And now I'm coming in with some lime green and mostly moss green mixed together. And I'm gonna be shooting that over those lines and hopefully it looks like some strings when I'm done. And there you have it. Well, all right, there you have it. In total, it took about 15 hours to render this piece. If you stayed to the end, as you saw, just use an arsenal of techniques to render a, a piece like this. I'm really happy the way it came. I hope you like it. Hope you learned something. Hope you picked something up along the way. If you did, if you guys know the drill, consider subscribing. Really appreciate it. Hit those links down below, that really helps out as well. And we'll see you in the next video.